Hello, my name's Lizzie Rowe. I've been a tour guide at the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford for a few years, and I wanted to share with you some of the things I've discovered about a painting on the top floor of the museum in the gallery devoted to Walter Sickert and his contemporaries. It's called Ennui and it dates from between 1917 and 1918. What we're looking at on the screen now is just a detail of this painting. So I'm going to show you the whole thing. Here it is. Uh, you can see it's painted all on canvas and it measures 76 by 56 centimetres. So it's relatively small. The scene we're being presented with is an interior scene. We seem to be maybe in a parlour or a drawing room or a back room somewhere. And there are two figures. One of them is a man. He's sitting at the table, leaning back in his chair and puffing, it seems, on a cigar. Behind him, there's a lady who's leaning heavily on the chest of drawers. She's sort of resting her head on her hand and she's gazing, it seems, at the glass dome in front of her, which is uh, housing a collection of stuffed birds. It has been written that her body seems to express a sigh. There's absolutely no connection between these two figures. They must be aware of each other, we have to believe, because they're so close physically. but they're not really connecting, they're not talking to each other, there's no communication between them. And what Sickert has done, he's added to this claustrophobic atmosphere by including lots and lots of patterned wallpaper and also by a heavily patterned carpet, a Turkish carpet that's on the table. He's also, you can see on the wall behind that detail that I picked out at the beginning, is a painting. It's a painting that shows us, maybe she's a music hall singer, She's a, a woman wearing a very low cut dress. Maybe she represents the exotic life that the figure in front of us would like to be leading. Uh, what we know from um, contemporary accounts that these two figures were models who were often used by Sickert. The man was called Hubby. He actually was an old school friend. And he was, well, it was said that Sickert kept him in beer. He paid him for modeling by buying his beer. And there is actually a half empty glass of beer in front of him on the table. Marie was at thought at some point to have been married to Abby and both of them were at some point part of Sickert's household. So I'm just gonna show you a detail that shows what really this kind of emphasizes how, although Sickert used black paint, he used to, um, to outline the figure of Hubby and the uh, chest of drawers behind, the brushwork is really very expressive. It's really quite free. What's particularly interesting is that the Ashmolean version is not the only version of this painting. This is actually the last. There are five painted versions altogether, and there are lots and lots of sketches, prints, and drawings. I'm just going to show you a few examples. This is the one that's in the Tate, or one of the ones that's in the Tate. Uh, it's a small drawing, it's well, ink on paper. And there are subtle differences. You can see uh, we're being presented with more of the left-hand side of the room, the edge of the chest of drawers and the complete dome. We haven't got the heavily wall patterned wallpaper or the pattern on the table. Uh, the matchbox is slightly open. It looks as though the glass of beer is empty. This little sketch is in the Ashmolean collection and it's showing that what he's interested in Sickert is the physical proximity of these two figures but also their kind of lack of connection to each other. And then this version again is in the Ashmolean and has been uh, this ink that's been drawn on paper uh, that's got a grid pattern on it. Um, again, I'd say the body language of hubby is slightly different. He seems more alert, uh, but the woman behind is equally rather slumped over the chest of drawers. The most famous version is probably this one. This is the one in the Tate Gallery in London. It measures about, well, twice, it's about twice the size of the Ashmolean version. And what's strikingly different about it is obviously the patterning. There's no patterning, the wallpapers, the walls are very plain, and the table also has no patterning on it at all. Uh, if we look at the two side by side, you can see the Ashmolean version, Harvey is yeah, possibly leaning back a little bit more. Um, the, opera singer or whoever, whoever she is on the wall again is subtly different uh, but what's very interesting about the Tate painting is that the paint is actually thinner uh, and it's not being kind of worked in the same way 
as the Ashmolean version. So there are kind of subtle gradations of mood and atmosphere, um, which can be detected looking at the different versions. Uh, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about Walter Sickert himself. Uh, here he is, um, looking rather jolly in this photograph by Charles Beresford. So he was an artist who lived in London where he became a founder member of the Camden Town group of artists, which included Augustus Dot John and other well-known artists. He's known particularly for his interest in low life. He always cited his studios in places that were, were not the smartest areas of London. Uh, he was particularly interested in the Camden Town murders. And a lot of his paintings have that same atmosphere that we've been looking at, of kind of being on the edge of misery, really. Uh, his personal life was obviously kind of rather difficult because he was married three times. He divorced his first wife, or he, he and his first wife divorced. His second wife predeceased him, and he predeceased his third wife. Actually, at the time when he was painting on Nui, he was, it seems, happily married to his second wife. It's a painting that has been of great interest and was of great, of great interest at the time to other writers, such as Virginia Woolf. And she wrote a, um, an essay about it called Walter Sickert and Conversation, in which she describes an imaginary conversation that took place. A group of people, a group of friends have been to visit an ex Sickert exhibition together. They've, they've actually witnessed ennui. They go back to have dinner together afterwards and they discuss it. And one of their themes of their discussion is, is Sickert a biographer or is he a novelist? Is he making up things or is he showing us you know, situations, uh, places, things that go on that really do exist? There's a great quote from Virginia Woolf actually, in which she, she writes of this particular painting. She says that she thinks the, the man sitting down may be a publican, he and his wife are in a pub, they're kind of having a quiet moment after a busy maybe Sunday lunchtime, and they're sitting in the back room, in the pub, of, the back room of the pub. She writes, it is all over with them, one feels. The accumulated weariness of innumerable days has discharged its burden over them. She's really putting the emphasis on the fact that what's important in this painting is not the event, but the emotion. And this sort of emotion is visible in other paintings by Sickert. This one, which is in the Tate Gallery in London, shows Marie and Hubby together. But again, Hubby is in the front of the painting. He looks as though, well, the title tells us he's off to the pub. He actually has his hand on the door handle. Marie, well, she's wearing a hat and a coat. She looks as though she's recently come in but she's clearly not being invited to go on the pub trip. What's particularly interesting is that not only Virginia Woolf, but a contemporary artist living and working today in uh, Los Angeles in America, called Ricky Niehaus, has created his own version of Sickert's painting. It's called Ennui, after Walter Sickert. And as you look at it, I think you'll be able to pick out, you can see that little detail that I showed you at the beginning on the wall. We obviously, we have, again, we have a man sitting down, a woman with her back to us. You kind of feel they might be together, and yet at this moment in time, they're really not connecting at all. And it's only, I think, when your eye travels around this painting that you realize they're actually in Ikea. They've gone on a shopping trip. He's not really taking a very active part in any decision-making process. He's sort of gazing off into the distance, he's sat, he decided to sit down. She is maybe looking at a price tag, deciding on which curtain material to buy. So what Ricky Niehasta has done here is captured that same atmosphere, but put it into a very contemporary setting. So thank you very much for looking at these pictures with me. I hope you've enjoyed them, and I hope it'll, it'll inspire you to go and look at the painting at the top floor of the Ashmolean. <laughs>